Guys, we got a number of questions about what sinking the arms into the plane of shoulder rotation means. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes just to recap that and go a little bit deeper into what exactly that means with some examples of big leaguers doing that properly. Uh, there's two parts to this. The first part is making sure that you're rotating around the spine in the first place. And the second part is actually making sure that your arms are synced into that proper plane of rotation. So the first part rotating around your spine is we're gonna use a PVC pipe as an example. I'm also gonna put a, a GIF up right here just so you can see it. Um, but basically, you can picture you have your spine and then you have the line of your shoulders perpendicular to that. And we're trying to rotate perpendicular to the spine. So if my spinal angle is straight upright like this, then this is the plane of rotation. If I have a little bit of shoulder tilt, suddenly this becomes the plane of rotation that I'm rotating in. And then an example like Tim Lincecum, Sandy Koufax, a ton of extension right here. Now rotating perpendicular to the spine, that's what that rotation looks like. So whatever the spinal angle you have is, whether it's here, here, all the way back here, that's the plane of rotation that we're dealing with. An example of not doing that, you see this a lot in kind of old school pitching mechanics mentality. Uh, some schools of thought actually emphasize this in order to throw strikes, is you see an emphasis on a linear uh, forward flexion of the trunk into release. So completely negating the rotation that we're trying to get. And what that looks like is basically that type of pattern. Uh, where guys are taught to finish with a firm glove side, push the ball into the target, forward flex the trunk in an effort to throw strikes, and in doing so, they're actually negating their ability to max out their velocity. So that's an example of not rotating around the spine, is this very linear follow through. You see that everywhere from little leagues, even in the pro ball. So that's what we're gonna talk about with rotating around the spine. Now what we wanna do, we have established where the plane of rotation is, whatever your spinal posture is, that's where the plane of rotation is. Now we just basically wanna make sure that both elbows are in that plane. So we're back here. We wanna make sure that the elbows are synced up into that plane of rotation so that as we rotate, we can effectively transfer that rotational energy into the ball. Whether a good example, we're gonna show Tim Linscombe here on the screen, but from even from a lower arm side, it's the same principles apply. So we get right here, Max Scherz is a good example. Uh, Pedro Martinez will put him up too. But same thing, elbows are right in line with the shoulders. And now as we begin to rotate, the elbows stay in that plane of rotation. So that's all it means. Examples of not doing that properly. Uh, a lot of times you'll see guys who get a little bit short arming, or short arm the ball a little bit. And so they'll get up here and at landing, their elbow actually comes up above the height of their shoulders. And so they're not, as they start to rotate, they're not able to effectively transfer all that rotational energy into the ball because their elbow is risen above the level of their shoulders. Another example is dragging the arm. And that's where a guy gets it landing and his elbow is still down here. Now, as he begins to rotate, it's not in the plane of his shoulders. And so it begins to drag. So those are two examples, either the elbow's too high or elbow's too low and the arm drags where you're not effectively getting the elbows in line with the shoulder rotation.